I think it's disheartening that my federation is more worried about one man's mental health than the hundreds of female athletes' mental health. I started powerlifting in September 2019 as a way to deal with um, mental health issues, also to help me um, stay sober. I met a friend online through Facebook named Ann Andrus. We would speak to each other through Facebook Messenger about powerlifting and common interests. It wasn't until 2020 that Ann and I were talking about Laura Hubbard and the Olympics and how Laura Hubbard was a man going into weightlifting. And I simply said, oh, I think that's completely unfair. I don't think men should be lifting in, in women's sports. And he replied, well, I'm a man, didn't you know that? And I said, no, I, I had no idea. He's like, yeah, I, I transitioned after age of 20. And I said, oh, so how long have you been powerlifting for? And do you expect to go to nationals and to go to worlds? And he replied, yes, I would like to go to national and worlds. At that time, I told him that I felt that was completely unfair. And I basically said to him, you know, if you, if you compete, I'll speak out about it. I'm not going to be quiet. So he blocked and deleted me ever since that conversation. Never once have spoken to him again. Going forward a couple of months, I did my first competition in which I made it to nationals. Nationals led to worlds. And in 2022, I ended up going to the nationals along with um, Ann Andrus. I was quite shocked actually to see him going to nationals. I really didn't think he was gonna go through with it. So Anne is a 40-year-old biological male. Men have many advantages um, physiologically over women, um, specifically in strength sports. Powerlifting is a strength sport. Men are just built differently. Um, they're built actually for bench press. Women have to work extra hard, especially if you've gone through puberty, you retain those things. No hormones is gonna, or if you take hormones, they will not suppress all of those major things. So just recently, Anne competed and basically quashed records by 200 kilograms. Uh, I mean, the numbers that he lifted, only a man would be able to beat those, those numbers. So if Anne did compete within his biological sex, he would rank around the 6,000 mark. He would not even rank, rank in the top 1,000 just due to being, um, you know, um, a man. Um, he, he ranks basically number two right now for the deadlift in Canada. I had written numerous letters to my Canadian powerlifting president, the Ontario president, also to the board, expressing to them my concern about Anne Andrus lifting. No one ever returned my emails. I mean, I never even got a simple reply of we've, I thought they received my email. So again, I felt very alone. I reached out to the International Powerlifting Federation, which is the governing body um, of all the nations. Um, they actually told my union, the, the Canadian Powerlifting Union, that they would have to align with the International Powerlifting Federation, which is, their policy is testosterone monitoring. My federation currently is just a trans inclusion policy. There is basically no policy. Anyone can identify as whatever they want, walk in, compete, and then go back to identifying as whatever they want. So basically, my boyfriend or any man could walk into a competition tomorrow, self-identify as a woman, compete, take records, take medals, take podium spots, and then the next day go back to being a man. There's no hormonal um, testosterone monitoring. There's no questions asked. They don't even ask you for ID at the door. It's basically however you feel that day, you can identify and then go back to being a man the next day. It's quite ridiculous. Ever since I've actually spoken up about the matter, I guess in the last year, year and a half, I have received three letters of disciplinary action. Two of those letters, they have threatened to suspend me all for basically um, speaking up.